If he doesn't have these scriptures, uh, this is something that God spoke into my heart as I was coming this morning as we prepare our hearts and reflect on what we now call traditionally Thanksgiving. I just want you, to, and, and, and and I'll leave it up to you as to why God gave me this word as I'm driving. In the 17th chapter of Luke, and I want you to just kind of listen. I mean, you're welcome to turn to it, but I just want you to listen to the word. In chapter 17, beginning at verse 11, Jesus is, of course, doing what Jesus does best, and that's ministering. It says, and it came to pass, he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And those who've been in Bible study, you know the significance of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And we understand because of their condition, they were not allowed to be close to anybody. In fact, they should have been screaming out what? Unclean. Unclean so that you won't come near them because this is how it's contagious. So they are afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus! Master, have mercy on us. And when he, Jesus, saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priests. He's quoting scripture now. This is an Old Testament requirement in the book of Leviticus that if you have leprosy, go, you have to go to the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, and one of them, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, and with a loud voice glorified God. And not only that, he fell down on his face at his feet, which is to say he worshiped him. Yes. And he was giving him Jesus thanks. He was giving Jesus thanks. He was giving Jesus thanks. And he was a Samaritan, which means he should not have been doing that. And Jesus answering said, were there not ten cleansed? Where are the nine or the other nine? Where are they? Did I not heal ten? Well, where's the rest of them? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save the strength. So what he's saying is the other nine did not come back to give glory to God for what had been happening, except this one leper. And Jesus said unto him, Arise and go thy way. Thy faith have made thee whole. These are the words that God gave you this morning to read into your hearing. Amen. As we prepare to go into what we celebrate traditionally, as Thanksgiving. Now, to tie into that, God never gives you something that's outside of what God has already put into your heart. And so this morning, I want to speak from a subject of a thankful heart. Were there not ten? Where are the other nine? How many times, this is not even, how many times has God blessed you yeah. Come on. and you didn't turn back? Mm -hmm. I'll write that. And you didn't turn back. Yeah. You got the job. Yeah. Huh? You got the house. You got the car. You got your health. You got your strength. You got your children. So when are you going to turn back? It's easy to read about them. It's easy to criticize them. 
but the word today is for you and for me. And we are going to use as a backdrop them. Them. I've been talking about thanking God for the little things. Well, it doesn't have to be something that, that's earth-shattering. Right. Amen. I went to the hospital last night, and for the first time in three months, my brother spoke. Amen. Three months. He's been in a coma. They had withdrawn all treatment. And we had all mentally prepared ourselves for his accident. And he spoke. And so my wife said, Clyde, we need to pray. So we grabbed his hands, along with his daughter. One of his daughters was there, and my brother. And we began to pray. And so I'm leading this prayer, blessing God for the miracle that God has performed in our sight. And as I'm praying, my brother took the prayer from me and started to pray. I'm telling you, he prayed. And he blessed God. And he thanked God. I tell you, it was an incredible moment in that room last night. Last night. Now, now many of you may not care. It's not your brother. And I understand that. Well, you, you know, let me be very, a, little, a little bit cool. Church people are selfish. They don't care about anybody but Jesus. Jesus. They care about themselves and those who love them. So you don't care about my brother. And I understand that. I get it. I get it. I'm going to go bury my uncle. I get it. But Sharon, just like you said in that text to me, you said, Pastor, I don't know how you do it. His name is Jesus. All right. All right. That's how I do it. Because at the end of the day, I'm the one who turned back. I turned back. And then began to worship God and to give God the glory for what he has done. Oh, I bless God for the doctors because he uses them. To his glory. This is a, an annual time when our nation is supposed to, name, to give thanks collectively for what the Lord has done. But I'm telling you that being thankful is more than mere words. The definition of thankfulness is to show, to show, to show oneself grateful. Lily did not. All the politicians come through here? Where are they this morning? Only one turned back to thank you for what you did. And she, she said, you show up. But did we not show up for all of them? Make a plan. Where are the other nine? Mm. Where are the other candidates that wanted our time and our attention before the election? Mm. Where are they? Where are they? This is how scripture speaks to our hearts. God is good and he's blessed and allowed permitted people to now be elected to offices that have never had a black face in it in the history of this county. A county that wants to be dominated by confederacy. That has a harsh history. God's good. God is so good. And I'm grateful now. We call it he has flipped the script. Scripture teaches us that we're supposed to be thankful to God in everything. 
1 Thessalonians 5.18 tells us to give thanks in everything. Not just for the house, the car, the job. The big ticket items. But for the heartbeat that you just had. For the breath that you just breathed without assistance. Huh? Without a, pulling a tank behind you. Or like my brother, you're still in a hospital bed tethered to an oxygen. Huh? And, and his life can go no further than in the length of the tomb. And look at us. We go where we want to go. Do what we want to do. And we don't turn back to give God the glory. Absolutely amazing. Because we take breathing for granted until you struggle for air. Yes. And now things have turned. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but did we not have an opportunity to thank God for the little thing? Yes. You see, according to the Thanksgiving tradition, mm -hmm. thankfulness is an attitude. Mm -hmm. And it's an attitude that is focused on God mm -hmm. where we are grateful for all the benefits. Mm -hmm. See, Knowing Jesus is so much more than being saved. All right, Pastor. You know, you, you, you get a life insurance policy. Well. But there are so many other benefits in the policy. You know, you can even go take out a loan against your life insurance policy. There are other. I remember the first time I ever rented a car. <coughs> And you go in there and you want to protect yourself. And on there it says, do you want to take out this collision? And that stuff gets expensive. It piles up quick. Until somebody asks me a simple question. Don't you have car insurance? I said, yeah, I got car insurance. Who you got? I said, I got USAA. He said, boy, you better check. No. No, no. <laughs> I thought, what are we doing? Read your policy. So I'm thinking that my insurance policy on my automobiles covered my automobiles. They said, no, that coverage extends to any automobile you get in. So when you get in the rental car, it's the same as you being in your car. There's so much more to the policy than what you believe. That's why I love Romans chapter 5. I love Romans chapter 5 because in addition to being saved, it says that we are, we have peace. Peace with God. I preach that to you. And that peace does not mean peace like the United States getting along with, with, with Russia. The, the Greek word is irene. And it literally means join with. You have been joined with God. And he says you were able to be joined with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. That's to tell you that you are what? One with God. Look at that. I thought I would just say, oh, it goes beyond just being saved. He says, not only that, but you have access, access by faith into his grace. You and I cannot go before King Trump. Well, we don't have access, even though we're citizens, we don't have access. Until Jesus Christ, man did not have access. But through the Lord Jesus Christ, I can now go into the throne room for myself. I can just walk in and holler, Daddy, I'm home. Huh? And I have favor with him. Look at this. If you have ever struggled one day in your life, this is for you. You also, God has given you the strength to do what? To glory in tribulation. Amen. Glory. Mm -hmm. you, you see, let me tell you what a tribulation is. Everybody familiar with a vice? You know, and as you turn the vice, the jaws will close until it grips whatever it is. And if you put something between them and you keep on, it'll crush you if you don't stop. You'll actually crush whatever it is you were trying to hold. 
Everybody got that image? <laughs> Tribulation in scripture is the word ellipsis, T-H-L-I-P-S-I-S. And what that word means is to, is the image of a vice. That's the picture supposed to be in your mind. That says when you are having a hard time, picture a vice. And guess who's in the middle of the jaws of the vice? You. And the tribulation is supposed to keep tightening, keep tightening, keep tightening, keep tightening until it crushes the life out of you. And yet scripture says when you're in Christ Jesus, you're late. Ah! Bring it on. Bring it on. We glory in tribulation. We find joy in our tribulation because our hope and confidence is in Jesus Christ. I'm talking about a lifestyle. I'm talking about how to think. Instead of letting the situation dominate you, you dominate the situation. All right, Pastor. I had, I was in the eighth grade, but I never forgot it. Mr. E.C. Mills in the eighth grade. He taught us about an eagle. And he said, an eagle is the highest flying bird in the world. An eagle will not fly in a storm. That's why the Bible has the image of an eagle. He says, when you see the storm clouds forming and coming this old way, what are you supposed to do? Mount up with wings. The eagle soars above the storm. He no storm cloud won't rain on him. He doesn't know anything about struggling in a snow, in, in, in a rainstorm, in a thunderstorm. He says that's not how it works. His hope and trust is in the one who created him. And God says, Clyde, you are supposed to like an eagle. When life pushes back on you, mount up. Don't sit there and allow the storm to crush you. Mount up with the wings. Rise up above it. Yeah. Claim the victory in Jesus Christ. You tell that old storm to get out of your way. You got a God to serve. Amen. That's what happens when you look back. Oh, you find a supernatural strength. Mm. And that doesn't mean that what happens to others in life won't happen to you. It happens to you, my Uncle David. Just like your relatives have died. I'm not immune to that. Huh? Hey Amen. I buried my dad. Three months later, I buried my mama. So that, that, that's not a, I don't have to worry about that. I've already lived through that moment. Amen. That's already happened for me. Some of you still can't imagine not having your mom and dad. I'm telling you, I've been without mine 19 years. I know exactly what it looks like. And I know the path that you must travel when you get the news. Oh yeah, it hurts. It always hurts. Because their deaths are unusual. It's an unusual experience in your life. It's unique. I'm talking about a lifestyle that's rooted in the disposition of your heart. Huh? Not a lifestyle that's based on situations and circumstances. See, we allow the wrong thing to control us. God operates in the heart of a man, not in situations, not in circumstances. God is operating in me. And the God that's operating in me can do all things. That's why I am victorious. What I say out there around the office, and I will not be defeated. That's how you talk to the devil. You don't let people just control your life. And when we give thanks to God, it helps to keep your heart in a right relationship. Amen. So it's right to be thankful to God mm -hmm. for what he is doing for you. I'm talking about today a thankful heart. That's what we saw with the one leper, a thankful heart. God did something for him. But did he not do it for ten 
So by doing something for them, it revealed their heart. That's what it did. It revealed their heart. And so the evidence against them is their lack of praise and thanks to God. Don't tell me how much you love the Lord. You see, we need to realize that genuine thankfulness is bound up with trust. Yeah. Now, what am I telling you? The Bible is, is, is pictures. You got to, these words are creating images in your mind. So I used to drive to uh, the Hoffman building when I was in the Army. This was back in the 80s. And I would cut through uh, Old Colchester Road. You know where it is, right? And I would get to Old Colchester Road and Route 1. And because I would have to sit through several turns of the light, you know, you find things to occupy your mind. This is before cell phones. So I had a Bible on the right seat, <laughs> right? I flipped through while I'm sitting there because I'm going to be there a while to get through the light. But this particular morning as I sat there, God directed my attention to a tree. And I looked at the tree, but it looked like a tree. But I acknowledged, okay, it's a tree. And I never forget it. He said, look again. That's all he said, look again. So I looked again. And the tree just right off from my car. I said, okay. I guess it's kind of like Jesus saying, do you love me? He told me, look again. I assumed there was a lesson in this by now, so I said, let me really concentrate so I can see whatever it is that God intends for me to see. And as I look close and examine that tree, here's what I saw. I saw some poison ivy that had wound itself and grown around the tree. But upon closer examination, as I looked, I saw that the tree and the poison ivy had become one. The poison ivy had actually grown into the tree. I couldn't separate them. That's what God wants. If I had attempted to separate them, I would damage the tree or kill the poison ivy. This is the image that God wants you to see this morning. 